Hi guys and welcome back to Vlogmas Day number 3. Um, so before I get into the video, I want to mention my daily charity, although today I actually decided um, instead of ch sharing a charity, I'm going to share a petition down below um, by Amnesty. So if you don't have the financial means to support a charity, uh, what you can definitely do is go and sign a petition. Um, this particular petition is for Germain Rukuki and he has been sentenced to 32 years in prison in Burundi for campaigning against torture. So you can ask for his release by signing the petition. Um, so please consider doing that. And uh, yeah, we'll link it down below and uh, the link also contains more information on his case. So if you want more information before signing anything, you can read through that. So, but uh, back to Vlogmas. Today I'm looking at one of my reading goals that I had from the, at the start of the year. Uh, I will link down below to my reading goals video. Uh, so you can check that out if you're interested. And one of my goals was to read 52 essays throughout the year, so on average one essay per week. And I have managed to reach that goal and I uh, have read, I've actually read 53 essays, I just realized when um, preparing for this, not 52, so one more um, overachiever that I am. Um, so I did read a few essay collections uh, to reach this goal, so let's start with those. Now the first collection I don't have with me because for the life of me I couldn't find it and normally when people say they can't find their books I'm always like how is that possible and now it has happened to me. But the first book is Yoga for People Who Can't Be Bothered to Do It by Geoff Dyer and while the title is really great I did not enjoy this collection as much as I would uh, as I thought I would. Um, it's a collection of travel essays and I think for me, Dyer, just uh, the way he looked at different people and different cultures, uh, I just uh, didn't vibe with that, if you will, and uh, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Another collection I read was The Collected Schizophrenias by Esme Wade and Wong, and uh, in this uh, Wong writes about living with schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type, and I definitely like this collection better than the one by Geoff Dyers and especially the essays in the middle section of this book. So the first essays you get um, a bit more, I would say, technical stuff in terms of um, the illness and also some of the terminology and abbreviations weren't really explained but they were very US specific so that was a bit more difficult for me. And then the last two essays veered more into sort of uh, religion and also esotericism and that wasn't quite uh, to my taste uh, but um, I, still, I still really enjoyed this uh, and I did discuss this collection with Karen from One White Reads, uh, Tiffany from Hierarchy Reads and Ma from Words Words Everywhere, I will link down below to uh, the channels and uh, that, that definitely helped me get a lot more out of them. I learned all kinds of things reading these, so I learned about section 5150 of the California Welfare and Institutions Code, which is basically involuntary hospitalization. I learned of the horrible way uh, the Yale University treated Wong, uh, basically forcing her out of the university because of her mental health issues, and it was also just interesting to get sort of her first-hand um, stories of what it's like living with schizoaffective disorder, how it affects her, how it affects her partner, uh, also for example the life choices she makes, so when it comes to having children or in her case deciding not to have children. So um, I, yeah, I would definitely recommend this one. The third collection uh, that I read, I read during Nonfiction November, and it's definitely the one that I enjoyed the most. And that is, it's not about the Borka, and it's edited by Mariam Khan. And this book is a reaction, in fact, to how a lot of the times Muslim women are spoken of and spoken for, mainly by white men, 
um, on this collection centers Muslim women and their experiences. Uh, it has 17 essays overall and they cover a wide range of topics. And my favorite essay in this collection was definitely A Modesty is the Best Policy by Coco Khan, uh, which was just absolutely hilarious. It was really funny. Um, the essay covers all kinds of different things. Uh, it goes from physical fitness to conversations that Coco Khan has with her mom. Uh, it talks about online matrimonial sites, but its humor was definitely what brought this essay home for me uh, particularly. There's also a nice bit of um, wisdom from her mom that she puts into the essay. Um, and it says, never ever let people make you feel ashamed for who you are. You know what is right and wrong in your heart and it's your heart that Allah sees, that I see and that you have to see every day when you look in the mirror. No one has the right to judge you. Uh, which I thought was just a very lovely sentiment. The other essays talk, for example, about mental health. They talk about being queer and Muslim, uh, the difference between Islam as a religion, which does not suppress women, and Muslim culture, which sometimes does, as well as the struggle between criticizing Muslim culture in those instances when it is oppressive to women um, versus this criticism then being used by racists and white supremacists. But yeah, that's just to name a few subjects. The collection does focus mainly on the situation in the UK. So you do get some essays that are very specific to the UK, for example, um, about the way that marriages are registered in the UK. Uh, but I personally, I didn't mind that at all. So um, yeah. Oh, what's also nice, it comes um, with a little glossary uh, in the beginning, um, which I found helpful since I did know some of the terminology, but definitely not all of it. Um, so that was really helpful when reading this. So overall, I would just highly recommend this collection. Now, in Nonfiction November, I also finished The Stonewall Reader. Uh, this is edited by the New York Public Library. And um, there were a few essays in here as well. So I read those uh, for my goal as well. The book, of course, covers Stonewall as a significant moment of LGBTQIA history. And it includes texts both from before, during and after Stonewall happened. And if you don't know about Stonewall, um, Stonewall was a bar in New York City on Christopher Street. And it is where one of the earliest and most well-known LGBTQ um, uprisings or riots happened in 1969. And there were just a few essays in here, um, but still rather interesting. There was one called Hey Man by Stephen F. Dansky. And he made a firm argument for the women's movement in it. And he goes even further than that. So he was arguing that gay men need to give over all their like final veto power over to the women in order to, to end uh, male supremacy. Um, while I didn't uh, completely agree with this argument, um, it still made for an interesting read. And there's also an essay in here by Joel Hall called Growing Up Black and Gay, uh, in which he talks um, amongst other things about life in prison and how he came to see himself as a revolutionary after learning about the Black Panthers. And then a collection that I have started but uh, haven't finished yet is uh, Disability Visibility and it's edited by Alice Wong. And uh, I will continue reading this next year actually for my um, essay goal next year because I will continue that goal. But I have uh, already read a few essays in here and I think it's a, it looks like it's a really great collection so far. I've learned more about Peter Singer's uh, eugenicist ideas in uh, the essay called Unspeakable Conversations by Harriet McBride Johnson, um, which was horrifying but also rather educational. I already knew about Peter Singer's bad ideas uh, before reading this essay, but not in detail. Um, and for a long time I actually only knew him as the writer of Animal Liberation, which I think is what he's most known for. Uh, I also learned a lot from reading The Erasure of Indigenous People in Chronic Illness by Jen Deerenwater and The Isolation of Being Deaf in Prison by Jeremy Woody. I think with both of these the titles are sort of um, 
self-explanatory and they speak of sort of systemic issues within the US. I also read a short essay by Mason Zaid about fasting during Ramadan when you have health issues and I um, did look her up and I found a TED talk by her which is absolutely hilarious and uh, fascinating to watch. Uh, so I will link that down below and um, please go check it out. I promise you won't regret. And then I also read four individual essays. So one was on whether rich or poor people have the bigger impact on the climate. Um, I also read Letter from Birmingham Jail by Martin Luther King Jr., which is a stunningly written call to action that, as the title suggests, he wrote while he was imprisoned. He was arrested uh, for nonviolent protests prior. And um, so, definitely recommend that one. And then I also read why are Indonesians being erased from Indonesian literature by Tiffany Tsao, which is online, so I will link that down below if you're interested in it. And in it, she argues against uh, Anglophone culture, um, basically determining what is worthwhile Indonesian literature and what is therefore going to be translated. And then I also <laughs> realized I read one essay uh, through work, which is a lyrical essay, and uh, we this little production uh, was printed from work and it's by Manon Hopf, uh, who had a stipend uh, with the place that I work for and she wrote a lyrical essay, so um, I also read this one. So overall I had a really good time reading these essays and uh, I, as I said, this is a goal that I want to keep for next year. And uh, I would just be curious, uh, what about you guys? Do you read essays? If so, have you read any this year that you would recommend? Um, let me know in the comments down below and I'll talk to you there. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Bye guys!